back again to another UML tutorial. And in this tutorial, I am going to explain how you can draw a class diagram in Eclipse using the Papyrus plugin. So let's get started. Let's create a new Papyrus plugin, a Papyrus project. Okay, so the project name is going to be class diagram example. There we go. I'm going to use UML as the uh, diagram language, so press next. Then I'm going to give it the name, the person class diagram, which is a UML class diagram, and finish. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this model a proper name. So right click, rename and choose a person class diagram as the name. There we go. That's safe. All right. So before I continue, I want to explain something about UML models and class diagrams in particular. So typically UML is a modeling standard that can be used to model for several for a lot of different types of programming language. Meaning the UML uh, modeling tools are generic and you can map them to specific programming languages such as Java. Having said that, this also means that by default UML has no programming language specific uh, elements available. It is however possible to make a platform specific model, so in this case we're going to create a Java UML model which uh, can be extended to include uh, certain Java-specific things, such as constructors. Okay, so towards that end, we need to do some setup to ensure that our class diagram is a Java model. So we need to ensure that uh, the properties window is open and the model explorer is open. If they are not open, you can go to Window, Show View, then choose Model Explorer in Papyrus, and properties in general, so these two windows are open. Okay, once they are open, you right click on your model, choose import, and import registered profile. So we're going to include the Java profile to ensure that our model is a Java model. Then right click again import registered package, then click on Java primitive types because I want to use the Java primitive types in my model. Lastly, uh, with the model view selected, the model node selected, go to properties, and then naturally you can give it a proper name, so person class diagram. Then go to profile and click on the apply registered profile button. Then again, choose Java, and agree. Okay, so why did I do this last step? Basically, doing this last step en enables me to attach uh, so-called stereotypes to certain modeling elements. So these stereotypes are used to uh, make, for example, attribute and operation Java-specific. Uh, meaning I can model Java specific things on that element and therefore create proper Java code afterwards. Anyway, you will see the use of this uh, towards the end of the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a package. So what is a package? A package is basically a folder inside your Java program that you can use to group classes together based on functionality. Um, basically, when your program becomes really, really big and you have many, many classes, you want to organize them into different packages. It basically makes your code more organized. And yeah, packages are determined based on functionality. So in this case, since my package is going to contain a data class, I'm going to name the package data. Uh, naturally, a package can contain multiple classes, but in this example, I'm only going to do one. Okay, so now let's drag the most important symbol which is the class, and I'm going to give this class the name person. So typically uh, a Java class, a single file in your Java program, 
uh, is modeled with this symbol. It contains a title. It contains attributes, so data that is saved inside the class. And operations, which are things that the class can do or behavior of the class. Okay, so let's create some attributes. So for that I'm going to drag property uh, to the attribute area. So in this case I want to have three, well, four attributes. Okay, so let's uh, set the attributes. So the first attribute I'm going to name, name, because it's going to contain the name of the person. So an attribute needs to have a data type, which is currently still undefined. So I'm going to click on dot 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 to select the data type. So from the UML primitive types, I'm going to choose string. Why from UML primitive types? Because it's not stated here as Java primitive type. So there we go. So the other thing I want to set is I want to set the visibility of this attribute to private. So basically I have a choice out of uh, three visibility modifiers. There's public, private and protected. So public means that this attribute can be accessed by any other class in the whole pro in the program. Private means can only be accessed uh, by methods in this very same class. And protected means can be accessed by other classes but only within the same package. In this case I'm going to choose private because I want my data to be configured by getters and setter methods which will be generated later on. Okay, next attribute. I'm going to name the next attribute H. Then I'm going to set the data type to integer. And also the visibility to private. As you can see, when you change the visibility, the icon over here changes. Alright, third attribute. I'm going to make it gender. And I'm going to set gender to char and the visibility will also be private. Okay, last attribute is going to be hobbies and will also be set to private and the data type will be string. But I'm going to do one more additional thing with this hobbies attribute. You may notice that behind my attribute there's a number here. This number means multiplicity. So basically this means that the name is of the type string and can have one single value. Same for age, same, uh, same for gender, same for hobbies. However, sometimes we want to store multiple values inside uh, um, attribute. So in that case we can change the multiplicity. So in this case a person can have multiple hobbies. So I'm going to go to multiplicity which gives me several choices. So 0 dot dot star means uh, no value, zero hobbies or many hobbies or anything in between. Um, 1 dot dot star means one hobby or many hobbies. Dot dot one, dot dot 1 means no hobbies or one hobby and 1 means 1. So in this case I'm going to opt for 1 dot dot star. So person has at least one hobby. Okay, not sure why this crash came about. There we go. I think, uh, just in case, I'm going to restart my Eclipse. Just to avoid things not going wrong in a moment. Okay, all right, let's continue. So yeah, there we have the hobbies with uh, a multiplicity of one dot dot star, indicating many hobbies. Then I'm going to drag one operation. And I'm going to name this operation print info. Okay, you may remember that the operation can have input parameters and a return type. So in this particular case, I want to configure one of each. So, uh, well, 
visibility is public because I want it to be publicly available. So I go to the own parameter section and click on plus. So the first parameter I want to add is the well the name of the person the name of the person viewing this person's info. Actually it doesn't really have to make sense. So viewer info. This is an input parameter of this method, therefore I'm gonna set the direction to in and the type I'm gonna set to a string. So there we go. So there's now one parameter added, and let's add another one. Um, I want to return the information this method to return the info, so I'm gonna set the direction to return. Visibility still to public and the type also to string. So this is gonna return the info of the person as a string. So there we go, the return type is now a string. Okay, the last step I need to do is I need to attach those stereotypes. So because right now I have a generic UML model here, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on class, then I'm gonna say apply stereotype, and my Eclipse will already suggest because I register the profile earlier earlier on that I can attach the Java class stereotype. So upon attaching you can see this is a Java class. So I'm gonna turn the attributes into Java properties via the same manner. So there we go. And lastly, the operation or method, I'm going to attach the Java method stereotype. So basically it's really easy because Eclipse is already showing me which stereotype I can apply. Okay, so now I have turned my UML class into a Java-based UML class, which leaves me with one thing to do, and that is attempt to generate code. So let's go and generate. There we go. So I've now created a person, the Java has now created a person class diagram project, which contains the Java class that I have modeled. So there we go. So if we uh, click on it, we can basically see the code. So we have string name h, string name integer h, char gender. And there is a list called hobbies. Why is there a list? Because a list can contain multiple string values. And the getter and setter methods are generated. Okay, so what I'd like to do here is I'm just going to remove those comments for a moment to make the class a bit easier to view. And in order to tidy the brackets a little bit, I'm going to right click, say source and format. So everything is now nicely aligned. Okay, so what do we have here? Our attributes that are all private. We have a getter and setter method to set the attribute and read from the attributes, which are public. Uh, so there's one uh, for every attribute. And I have a um, what we call a skeleton of my print info method. So a string as the return type and string viewer info as the input parameter. It returns null at this point because it's up to me to implement this method. All right, so that's the very basics of Java class diagram modeling in Eclipse with the UML with the Papyrus plugin. So that'll be all for now. See you next time. Mm -hmm.